today we'll discuss about muscle spindle we have various proprioceptors which are present in muscles tendons joints as well as ligaments and fascia in muscle we have muscle spindle as proprioceptor so muscle spindles they are stretch receptors they are present in the skeletal muscle they are important for proprioception each skeletal muscle contains muscle spindle number of muscle spindle present in the skeletal muscle it depends on the precise movement carried out by the skeletal muscle for example hand muscles they have to perform precise activity so they have large number of muscle spindle whereas back muscles they have less number of muscle spindle now we discuss about structure of muscle spindle muscle spindle has two types of fibers intrafusal fibers and extrafusal fibers in each muscle spindle you can see here in the diagram these are intrafusal fibers these are and these are extrafusal fibers so in each muscle spindle about 3 to 10 small muscle fibers are present which are known as intrafusal fibers this intrafusal fibers they are encapsulated in thin connective tissue capsule and this capsule also contains fluid and this muscle spindle intrafusal fibers they are present in between extrafusal fibers which are large and at the ends this intrafusal fibers they are attached to the extrafusal fibers you can see here these are intrafusal fibers which are attached to this extrafusal fibers now we we'll discuss about intrafusal fibers intrafusal fibers they have central part which is you can see here non contractile portion and it does not have actin and myosin filaments and therefore it doesn't have striation also and peripheral parts they are contractile because of presence of actin and myosin filaments and it is known as striated part central part of this intrafusal fibers that is known as sensory part because sensory nerve endings they carry information from central part now intrafusal fibers are again of two types nuclear back fibers and nuclear chain fibers in each muscle spindle about 2 to 5 nuclear back fibers are present this nuclear back fibers they have a diameter of about 30 micrometer and length is about 7 mm they are known as nuclear back fibers because they have a bag like structure in the center in which nuclei are present and second variety of intrafusal fibers are nuclear chain fibers their diameter is half the nuclear back fiber back fiber diameter was 30 micrometer here it is 15 micrometer and nuclear chain fibers they do not have bag like structure they are present in the form of chain and therefore they are known as nuclear chain fibers this one this are and they have nuclei scattered throughout the fiber now we discuss about nerve supply of the muscle spindle muscle spindle has both afferent and efferent nerve supply also sensory and motor nerve supply now starting with the sensory fibers you can see here these are primary sensory fibers as we have discussed central parts of the intrafusal fibers that is non contractile but it receives sensory fibers now there are two types of sensory fibers number 1 that is known as group 1a fibers and second is group 2 fibers we will discuss now group 1a fibers they are also known as primary sensory nerve fibers or primary sensory endings and 
they supply both nuclear back fibers as well as nuclear chain fibers this fibers they are present in the form of spirals which is wound around the center part of nuclear chain fiber and the nuclear back fiber and therefore this endings are also known as annulo spiral endings diameter of the primary sensory fibers is about 17 micrometer and impulse conduction rate is about 70 to 120 meters per second this primary nerve endings they supply both nuclear back fibers as well as nuclear chain fibers okay and they are responsible for two varieties of responses one that is dynamic response which is shown by the nerve fibers supplying nuclear back fibers and second one that is static response which is seen by the nerve fibers supplying nuclear chain fibers we will discuss what is static and dynamic response now second variety of fibers they are secondary sensory fibers or type 2 fibers this fibers they supply mainly nuclear chain fibers this fibers they are like flower their endings are like flower and therefore they are known as flower spray endings this nerve endings they respond mainly to sustain stretch and therefore they measure the muscle length and they are responsible for static response now we discuss about the motor supply motor or efferent fibers to the muscle spindle they are gamma fibers they supply intrafusal fibers this gamma fibers are again of two types dynamic gamma fibers and static gamma fibers dynamic gamma fibers they innervate striated poles of the nuclear back fibers you can see here this one and they are in the form of plate and therefore they are known as plate endings whereas static fibers static gamma fibers they innervate or they carry information from the striated poles of nuclear chain fibers and their structure is like a trail you can see here and therefore this endings are known as trail endings this endings they increase tonic activity in group 1a afferent fibers at given muscle length and therefore they are responsible for static response sustained contraction now we discuss about role of muscle spindle muscle spindle is a stretch receptor so it plays an important role in the stretch reflex now what is stretch reflex whenever muscle is stretch it gets contracted as we have discussed two varieties of stretch reflexes are there dynamic stretch reflex and static stretch reflex we will discuss what is it what is dynamic stretch reflex when muscle is stretched suddenly or you can say there is sudden change in the length of the muscle spindle receptor what happens change in the length stimulates primary nerve endings they are here you can see nerve ending 1a fibers nerve endings primary nerve endings they supply nuclear back fibers and they are responsible for dynamic stretch reflex you can see here this one so now what happens when this primary nerve endings are stimulated impulses are transmitted through this primary endings to the spinal cord and they cause stimulation of alpha motor neurons and this alpha motor neurons they supply extra fusal fibers and that results in reflex contraction of the same muscle and this is dynamic stretch reflex example of dynamic stretch reflex is when we are performing knee jerk or ankle jerk there is sudden 
stretch this sudden stretch of the muscle stimulates primary nerve ending supplying nuclear back fiber and that results in the contraction of the muscle now second variety of stretch reflex is static stretch reflex static means sustained stretch when the muscle is contracted continuously here impulses are transmitted by both 1a as well as 2 fibers that is from primary and secondary nerve endings supplying nuclear chain fibers you can see here 1a nerve fibers they supply nuclear chain fibers as well as 2 they also supply nuclear chain fibers so this nerve endings are now stimulated and they also result in stimulation of alpha motor fibers and it causes contraction of extra fusal fibers so here in the static reflex muscle contraction is continuous as long as the muscle is stretched and this is static stretch reflex example is postural reflexes when we are standing or when we are in particular posture stretching of that particular muscle results in muscle contraction that is by static stretch reflex another function of the muscle spindle is maintenance of muscle tone tone is a state of contraction present in the muscle and for that we require gamma neuronal discharge as we have discussed gamma fibers they supply both nuclear bag and nuclear chain fibers there is continuous gamma motor neuronal discharge to this intrafusal fibers and because of continuous gamma motor neuronal discharge there is stimulation of 1a and 2 fibers 1a and 2 they are afferent fibers so when they are stimulated this because of gamma motor neuronal discharge now this 1a and 2 fibers they stimulate alpha motor neurons and when alpha motor neurons they are stimulated they result in a state of partial contraction of the muscle so you can say that gamma and alpha coactivation which is known as alpha gamma coactivation that is important for movement and it contributes to the excitability as well as firing rate of the alpha motor neurons it is important for maintenance of muscle tone